Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my web page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, Neurophysician from Rajmandri, Andhra Pradesh, India. My email is sriklpm at gmail.com. I am also the medical author of the two books Focused Neurology and Exam Oriented Clinical Neurology. We are continuing with a series of lectures of Prime Neurology. There are about 50 episodes of Prime Neurology and if one listens to all these 50 episodes of Prime Neurology, one would have acquired a good knowledge of Neurology. Right now we are on Prime Neurology Part 22, Epilepsy Part 2, Classification of Seizures. So today in this episode we are going to discuss the classification of seizures. Classification of seizures. A fundamental principle is that seizures may be either focal or generalized. Focal seizures originate within networks limited to one brain region. Focal seizures are often associated with structural abnormalities of the brain. Generalized seizures arise within and rapidly engage networks distributed across both cerebral hemispheres. Generalized seizures may result from cellular, biochemical or structural abnormalities that have a more widespread distribution. The pathophysiology of classification, the pathophysiological classification of seizures. In A, we are seeing focal seizures with secondary generalization. In B, we are seeing the primary generalized seizures. A, a focal seizure originates from a paroxysmal discharge in a focal area of the cerebral cortex. A focal seizure originates from a paroxysmal discharge in a focal area of cerebral cortex, often the temporal lobe. The seizure may subsequently spread to the rest of the brain, secondary generation via the diencephalic activating pathways. Whereas in the genetic epilepsy syndromes, the abnormal electrical discharge originate from the diencephalic activating system and spread simultaneously to all areas of the cerebral cortex. So this is the representation for focal seizures and for the generalized seizures. So now let's classi go for the classification of seizures. Focal onset, it can be further described as having intact or impaired awareness motor or non-motor onset or evolve from focal to generalized or bilateral tonic-clonic. Generalized onset, motor, tonic-clonic, other motor example atonic, myoclonic or non-motor absence and unknown onset is motor, non-motor or classified. So classification of seizures is based on the onset whether it is a focal onset, generalized onset or unknown onset. Electroencephalograms in epilepsy. In generalized epileptic discharge as seen in epilepsy syndromes such as childhood absence or juvenile myoclonic epilepsy, you can see that it is generalized. Whereas in focal seizures, there are focal sharp waves in this diagram over the right parietal region circled with spread to with spread of discharge to cause a secondary generalized tonic clonic seizures. The trigger factors for seizures sleep deprivation, missed doses of anti epileptic drugs in treated patients, alcohol, particularly withdrawal, recreational drug misuse, physical and mental exhaustion, flickering lights, including TV and computer screens, generalized epilepsy syndromes only. Intercurrent infections and metabolic disturbances, uncommon, loud noises, music, reading and hot baths. Focal onset seizures. Focal onset seizures originate within networks limited to one brain region. They may be focal seizures with intact awareness, focal seizures with impaired awareness, evolution of focal seizures to generalized seizures. Now let's see one by one. Focal seizures with intact awareness. Focal seizures can have motor manifestations, tonic, clonic or myoclonic movements 
और नॉन मोटर मैनिफेस्टेशन सेंसरी ऑटोनॉमिक इमोशनल सिम्टम्स विदाउट इंपेयरमेंट ऑफ अवेयरनेस जैक्सोनियन मार्च इट रिप्रेजेंट्स द स्प्रेड ऑफ सीजर एक्टिविटी और प्रोग्रेसिवली लार्जर रीजन ऑफ मोटर कॉर्टेक्स टॉट स्पैलसी पेशेंट्स में एक्सपीरियंस अ लोकलाइज पैरस फॉर मिनिट्स टू मेनी अवर्स इन द इन्वॉल्व रीजन फॉलोइंग द सीजर्स एपिलेप्सिया पार्शियालिस कंटिन्यूअ द सीजर में कंटिन्यू फॉर अवर्स टू डेज और अस द सब्जेक्टिव इंटरनल इवेंट्स एग्जाम्पल द एपिगैस्टिक सेंसेशन दैट आर नॉट डायरेक्टली ऑब्जर्वेबल बाय समवन एल्स नाउ लेट्स टॉक अबाउट फोकल सीजर्स विद इम्पेयर अवेयरनेस फोकल सीजर्स में बी अकम्पनीड बाई ट्रांसेंट इंपेयरमेंट ऑफ द पेशेंट्स एबिलिटी to maintain normal contact with the environment the impaired awareness is usually accompanied by automatisms what are automatisms they are involuntary automatic behaviors that have a wide range of manifestations such as chewing lip smacking all these are all automatisms evolution of focal seizures to generalized seizures focal speech seizures can spread to involve both cerebral hemispheres and produce a generalized seizures it is extremely important to distinguish evolution of focal seizures to generalized seizures and generalized onset seizures because there may be differences in the treatment of epilepsy characterized by focal versus generalized onset seizures now let's talk about the generalized onset seizures generalized seizures arrives at some point in the brain but immediately and rapidly engages neural networks in both cerebral hemispheres they are typical absent seizures atypical absent seizures generalized tonic clonic seizures atonic seizures myoclonic seizures and epileptic spasms now let's talk about the typical absent seizures typical absent seizures are characterized by sudden brief lapses of consciousness without loss of postural control the seizures usually last for only seconds conscious returns as suddenly as it was lost and there is no post ictal confusion typical absent seizures are associated with a group of genetically determined epilepsies with onset usually in childhood ages 4 to 10 years and are the main seizure type in 15 to 20% of children with epilepsy the electrophysiologic hallmark of typical absent seizure is a burst of generalized symmetric 3 hertz spike and slow wave discharges that begins and ends suddenly superimposed on a normal eeg background hyperventilation tends to provoke these electrographic discharges and even the seizures themselves and is routinely used when recording the eeg atypical absent seizures atypical absent seizures have features that deviate both clinically and electrophysiologically from typical absent seizures the eeg shows a generalized slow spike and wave pattern with a frequency of less than 2.5 per second atypical absent seizures are usually associated with diffuse or multifocal structural abnormalities of the brain they are less responsive to anti convulsants compared to the typical absent seizures generalized tonic clonic seizures generalized tonic clonic seizures are the main seizure type in 10% of all persons with epilepsy they are the most common seizure type resulting from metabolic derangements and are therefore frequently encountered in many different clinical settings the initial phase of seizure is usually tonic contract of muscles throughout the body accounting for a number of the classic features of the event after 10 to 20 second the tonic phase of the seizure typically involves into a clonic phase produced by superimposed superimposition of periods of muscle relaxation on the tonic muscle contractions patients gradually regain consciousness over minutes to hours and during this transition there's typically a period of post ictal con- confusion the generalized tonic clonic seizures the eeg pattern the eeg during the tonic phase of the seizure shows a progressive increase in the generalized low voltage fast activity followed by generalized high amplitude polyspike discharges in the clonic phase 
the high amplitude activity is typically interrupted by a slow waves to create a spike and a slow wave pattern. Generalized seizures tend to terminate synchronously over widespread brain regions. The post-ictal EEG shows diffuse suppression of all cerebral activity, then slowing that gradually recovers as the patient awakens. Atonic seizures. Atonic seizures are characterized by sudden loss of postural muscle tone lasting 1 to 2 seconds. Consciousness is briefly impaired but there is usually no postictal confusion. <coughs> Similar to pure tonic seizures, atonic seizures are usually seen in association with known epilepsy syndromes. Myoclonic seizures. Myoclonus is a sudden and brief muscle contraction that may involve one part of the body or the entire body. Pathologic myoclonus is mostly seen in association with metabolic disorders, degenerative CNS disorders or anoxic brain injury. Myoclonic seizures usually coexist with other forms of generalized seizures but are the predominant features of juvenile myoclonic epilepsy. <coughs> Epileptic spasms Epileptic spasms are characterized by a brief sustained flexion or extension of predominantly proximal muscles including the truncal muscles. The EEG usually shows hypsarrhythmia, diffuse giant waves with a chaotic background of irregular multifocal spikes and sharp waves. <coughs> During the clinical spasm, there is a marked suppression of the EEG background, the electrodecremental response. <coughs> Epileptic spasms occur predominantly in infants and likely result from differences in neuronal function and connectivity in the immature versus the mature CNS. Epilepsy syndromes. Epilepsy syndromes are, are disorders in which the epilepsy is a predominant feature and there is sufficient evidence that through clinical EEG, radiologic or genetic observations to suggest a common underlying mechanism. The three important epilepsy syndromes are juvenile myoclonic epilepsy, Lennox Gestalt syndrome and mesial temporal lobe epilepsy syndrome. Juvenile myoclonic epilepsy. Juvenile myoclonic epilepsy is a generalized seizure disorder of unknown cause that appears in early adolescence and is usually characterized by bilateral myoclonic jerks that may be single or repetitive. The myoclonic seizures are most frequent in the morning after awakening and can be provoked by sleep deprivation. Consciousness is preserved unless the myoclonus is especially severe. Many patients also experience generalized tonic-clonic seizures and up to one third have absent seizures. Although complete remission is uncommon, the seizures usually respond well to appropriate anticonvulsant medication. There is often a family history of epilepsy and genetic studies suggest a polygenic cause. Lennox Gestalt Syndrome Lennox Gestalt syndrome occurs in children and is defined by the following triad. 1. Multiple seizure types, usually including generalized, tonic clonic, atonic, and atypical absent seizures, and EEG showing less than 3 Hz spike and wave discharges and variety of other abnormalities. 3. Impaired cognitive function in most but not all cases. Lennox Gestalt syndrome is associated with CNS disease or dysfunction from a variety of causes including de novo mutations, developmental abnormalities, perinatal hypoxia, ischemia, trauma, infection and other acquired lesions. The multifactorial nature of this syndrome suggests that it is a non-specific response of the brain to diffuse neuronal dysfunction. Unfortunately, many patients have a poor prognosis due to the underlying CNS disease and the physical and psychosocial consequences of severe poorly controlled epilepsy. Mesial temporal epilepsy. Mesial temporal lobe epilepsy syndrome. Mesial temporal lobe epilepsy syndrome is the most common syndrome associated with focal seizures with impairment of consciousness and is an example of an epilepsy syndrome with distinctive clinical EEG and pathologic features. High resolution magnetic resonance imaging can detect the characteristic hippocampal sclerosis that appears to be essential in the pathophysiology of 
mesial temporal lobe epilepsy syndrome for many patients recognition of this syndrome is especially important because it's it tends to be refracted to treatment with anti convuls anti convulsants but responds well to surgical intervention the causes of seizure according to the age neonates less than 1 month infants and children less than 1 month and less than more than 1 month and less than 12 years adolescents 12 to 18 years young adults 18 to 35 years older adults more than 35 years in neonates less than 1 month the causes are perinatal hypoxia and ischemia intracranial hemorrhage and trauma cns infection metabolic disturbances like hypoglycemia hypocalcemia hypomagnesemia pyridoxine deficiency drug withdrawal developmental disorders and genetic disorders in infants and children that is more than 1 month and less than 12 years the common cause are febrile seizures genetic disorders like metabolic degenerative primary epilepsy syndromes cns infections developmental disorders and trauma in adolescents that is 12 to 18 years the common cause are trauma genetic disorders infection illicit drug use and brain tumor in young adults 18 to 35 years the common cause are trauma alcohol withdrawal illicit drug use brain tumor and auto antibodies in older adults more than 35 years it is cerebrovascular disease brain tumor alcohol withdrawal metabolic disorders like uremia hepatic failure electrolyte abnormalities hypoglycemia hyperglycemia alzheimer's disease and other degenerative cns disease and auto antibodies febrile seizures the most common seizures arising in late infancy and early childhood are febrile seizures which are seizures associated with fevers but without evidence of cns infection or other defined causes the overall prevalence is 3 to 5 percent patients often have a family history of febrile seizures or epilepsy febrile seizures usually occur between 3 months and 5 years of age and have a peak instance between 18 and 24 months the typical scenario is a child who has a generalized tonic clonic seizure during a febrile illness in the setting of a common childhood infection such as otitis media respiratory infection or gastroenteritis the seizures is likely occur during the rising phase of the temperature curve that is during the first day rather than well into the course of the illness a simple febrile seizure is a single isolated event brief and symmetric in appearance Complex febrile seizures are characterized by repeated seizure activity a duration of more than 50 minutes 15 minutes or by focal seizures focal features approximately one third of patients with febrile seizures will have a recurrence but less than 10 percent have three or more episodes recurrences are much more likely when the febrile seizures occurs in the first year of life simple febrile seizures are not associated with an increased in the risk of developing epilepsy while complex febrile seizures have a risk of 2 to 5 percent other risk factors include the presence of pre-existing neurological deficits and a family history of non-febrile seizures so these are the wonderful episode wonderful concepts of the different types of seizures the other important concepts of clinical neurology i put it in a book called exam oriented clinical neurology written by me dr s was published by the white army this book will be very useful for students appearing for the clinical neurology exams so if interested this book could be purchased the other book i have written is focused neurology written by me dr s Srinivas, published by cbs publishers and distributors this book contains all the essential elements of theoretical neurology this book will be very useful for students appearing for viva or orals this book is available online from leading from all leading booksellers online including amazon so if interested this book could be purchased online especially amazon i hope you have enjoyed listening to these wonderful concepts of different types of epilepsy as i said in the early part of my lecture there are going to be 50 episodes of prime neurology and if one listens to all these 50 episodes of prime neurology one would have acquired a good knowledge of neurology we are just done with another episode of prime neurology so if you have liked this video Please like, share, but subscribe to my YouTube channel, Dr. Sinwas Medical Concepts, which is India's leading neurology educational YouTube channel, and my webpage, Dr. Sinwas Concepts. Thank you. Bye.